गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स सो टुडे वी हैव टू स्टार्ट विथ द सेकेंड टाइप ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स परमानेंट टिश्यू दैट इज फ्लोयम एंड वाई दिस इज द कॉम्प्लेक्स परमानेंट टिश्यू बिकॉज दिस टिश्यू इज कम्पोज ऑफ मोर देन वन टाइप ऑफ सेल्स विच इज स्ट्रक्चरली डिफरेंट एंड फंक्शनली डिफरेंट सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स नो अबाउट फ्लोयम फ्लोयम इज डिराइव फ्रॉम अ लैटिन टर्म फ्लोस which means bark and why phloem term is given because this tissue is present in the barked region if you will see the ts of this stem the peripheral region is covered with the bark so this tissue is found in the barked region so that is why this tissue has got its name from phlos that is phloem and its major function or the only function is the carrier for food so let's start with the structure of phloem phloem is composed of structurally and functionally four different types of cells and what are the four different types of cells that is sieve tubes companion cell phloem parenchyma and phloem fibers okay out of these these three are living cell and the only dead cell is the phloem fiber so that is why this is the living complex permanent tissue this is the living complex permanent tissue whereas the xylem was the dead complex permanent tissue okay so why it is the living complex permanent tissue because it is composed of four different types of cells and out of these four different types of cells three are living in nature so that is why phloem is the living complex permanent tissue so let's start with the structure first type of cell is the sieve tubes so sieve tubes are elongated cells sieve tubes are elongated cells sieve tubes are elongated thick walled but the internal cellular components are present but here you have to think that the internal cellular component that is the cytoplasm with the cell organelles is shifted towards the periphery okay and the transverse wall this is the transverse wall this is the transverse wall so the transverse wall is perforated okay so when the transverse wall is perforated perforated it means it will have the pores if this is the ts of the transverse wall it will have the pores like a structure like this okay so that transverse wall with the perforation is known as sieve plate let's see the structure over here so this is the sieve cell and the sieve cell is thick walled okay the cytoplasm with the cell organelles is towards the periphery and the transverse wall is what you see it is perforated having the pores in between and the sieve tube cells are arranged one over the other this is one sieve tube cell this is the another sieve tube cell these sieve tube cells are arranged one over the other so when it is arranged one over the other it will form a long continuous channel through these perforations and the substances will move in the downward direction okay then the next type of cell is the companion cell companion cell is actually the phloem type of parenchyma and as the name is suggesting companion so it will provide the company to the sieve tube elements for its function so it will have rich cytoplasm uh, distributed throughout the cell then the other type of cell is the phloem parenchyma so as you know the parenchymatous cells is having the large vacuole so these vacuoles will store the food and water and it will provide the rest cells of the phloem okay and the last dead type of cell present in phloem is the phloem fibers which is sclerenchymatous in nature so sclerenchyma is already dead type of dead cell so this phloem fibers will also known as bast fibers okay location it is present towards the periphery of the roots and stem so that is why this tissue is phloem and the term is derived from phlos which means bark the function of this tissue is to carry the food in the downward direction 
okay not like xylem xylem had to carry the uh, water and mineral in the upward direction so that is why it has to counteract the gravitational pull so that is why the walls need to be thickened with the help of lignin whereas this tissue is carrying the food in the downward direction that is along the gravity so that is why the cell wall uh, does not need to be thick as it is in xylem then here is all the types of uh, components of the phloem or types of phloem cells this is sieve tube sieve tube this is the sieve plate which is having the perforations the sieve tube cells are arranged one over the other this is the companion cell okay this is the phloem parenchyma which is providing the food to the rest types of phloem and this is pho uh, phloem fibers which will provide the mechanical strength and support to the other components of the phloem now vascular bundle it is overlapped over here so vascular bundle vascular why it is known as vascular because it is made up of vessels you have seen xylem is like a vessel you have seen phloem is like a vessel and bundle since it has more than one type of vessels arranged one after the um, around each other and forming a bundle like the bundle of pipes you must have seen more than one pipes collected collected together is known as bundle so here also more than one type of pipes or vessels like a structure collectively known as what bundle so xylem and phloem is collectively known as vascular bundle here xylem here it is phloem and in between it is having a ring of cambium okay so this is the arrangement of xylem and phloem that is the vascular bundle this is the dicot stem and this is the monocot stem in dicot stem the vascular bundle is arranged in concentric pattern whereas in monocot stem the vascular bundles is scattered then another difference that in dicot stem in the vascular bundle there is a ring of cambium okay whereas in monocot stem only xylem and phloem is present in the vascular bundle there is no ring of cambium so when there is no ring of cambium in the vascular bundle there will be no secondary growth there will be no secondary growth of the root and stem whereas in this when there is a layer of cambium in between the xylem and phloem of the vascular bundle in dicot stem there will be the secondary growth so you must have seen that the grasses stem and root are very thin why there is no secondary growth whereas the uh, mango trees stem and root is thick because there is secondary growth due to the presence of cambium in between the xylem and phloem of the vascular bundle i hope you must have understood this is all for today thank you everyone